Okay, everyone, um, we're moving on to section 3.6. We're going to be solving polynomial and rational inequalities. So presumably we know how to solve polynomial and rational equations. In fact, we had to do that in the, in the previous video uh, in section 3.5. But here we're going to talk about um, inequalities. And if you remember, inequalities oops, generally involve things like less than or greater than or less than or equals or greater than or equals. So we're going to see these symbols a lot, right? So, so let's start with polynomial. So this is our first example. x times x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 21. So we want to solve that inequality. All right. So, so first of all, this first step is to write the inequality in the form. You have some polynomial p either greater than 0, less than 0, greater than or equal to 0, or less than or equal to 0. So this is greater than or equals. So this, to me, looks like, hang on, this looks to me like this inequality right here. So that's this here. And so, um, so we're going to, we, we need to get this in this form. In other words, we need to have 0 on the right side. Okay. So here's the original inequality, x times x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 21. So we have to somehow get that to be some polynomial greater than or equal to 0. So obviously this 21 here is not supposed to be here, right? It's supposed to be on the other side, the left side. So that's an easy fix. Let's just subtract 21 from both sides. And when we do that, we get, oops, we get x times x plus 4 minus 21 is greater than or equal to 0. And while this doesn't look like a polynomial, at least it's not in standard form right now, we can just multiply this out. So we get x times x, or x squared, plus 4x minus 21 is greater than or equal to 0. So this, this here looks pretty much exactly like this. We have some function, p of x, that's a polynomial, is greater than or equal to 0. So that was all just step one, rewriting it in the proper form. Now, step two, right, so step two here, hang on, is to solve the corresponding equation p of x equals zero. So our p of x, this is the p of x, that's because it's a polynomial. So now we just take the same function, x squared plus 4x minus 21, and now set it equal to zero. And you know, you all know how to solve this. This is a, a standard quadratic equation in standard form. Um, so you can just plug this into the quadratic formula. Um, on the other hand, in this case, you can also factor. You can look for two numbers whose product is negative 21 and whose sum is positive 4. So it's not 1 and 21. It's going to be 3 and 7, right? 3 times 7 is 21. And 7 minus 3 is 4. So I think it's plus 7 and minus 3. All right, so now it should be pretty easy to solve. x plus 7 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0 gives us x equals negative 7 and x equals positive 3. Okay, so those are the solutions to this equation here from step 2. We have to solve that equation, right? Okay. Now, back to step three. I'm going to go way over here, if that's OK with you. So step three is to draw a number line. All right, so here's a number line. It's, we don't need it that long, but that's good enough. Um, and mark each solution from step two on the number line. So we have the two solutions, negative seven. That'll be over here somewhere on the left. And then positive three will be over here. All right, and we have a whole bunch of numbers in between, negative six, negative five, and so on. Um, that are in between, right? So, so we have our polynomial function. Again, just to, just to repeat, this is x squared plus 4x minus 21. Or, in factored form, it's x plus 7 times x minus 3. And we're just looking for the signs in this case, right? So when, right, we know that when x is 3, y is 0, and when x is negative 7, y is also 0. So that's why I'm going to put little zeros here. Um, let me use a different color, actually. Hang on. Put a 0 here, 
and a zero here because that's what p of x is at those numbers. Everywhere else, p of x will be some other number. It could be a positive number, it could be a negative number. So that's our step four now, right? We're back to step four. Step four says on each segment, and in fact, we have three segments here. In fact, maybe we should label these um, for future reference. We have everything less than negative seven. So that's from negative infinity to negative seven. We have everything between negative seven and positive three. And then we have everything bigger than three, so from three to infinity. So I'm just writing the, these segments, what I call segments, are really just intervals. And these intervals, I'm gonna write in interval notation. Okay, all right, so pick an x on each interval, right? So let's start with the first interval here, negative infinity to negative seven. In other words, pick your favorite number less than negative seven. Um, so I'm gonna pick x equals, how about just negative eight? Let's keep it as simple as possible. Negative eight is less than negative seven. And what do we do? We evaluate p at this number, p at negative eight. So we can plug it into this function or we can plug it into, right, the factored version, negative eight plus seven times negative eight minus three. And we just get negative one times negative 11, which is positive 11, right? And so all we really care about is, is this result, the 11, is that positive or negative? Well, 11 is bigger than zero, right? So it's a positive number. And that tells me that if I plug in negative eight, I get a negative number here, right? And so if I plugged in negative nine, negative 10, negative 1,000, right, you're, you're still gonna get negative numbers everywhere less than negative seven. Right. In other words, the only, t the only times the sign could change from negative to positive is at these dividing points, right? These boundary points, negative, negative seven and three, right? So um, I think I have to scroll down a little bit here, right? Because we're still on step four. Um, so now we want to plug in a number on the middle segment. So, so pick your favorite number that's between negative seven and positive three. Well, I like zero. Zero is, you know, right, between a negative and a positive number. So I'm going to pick x equals zero, you know. If you picked negative six or positive one or something, that it, that'll work too. But when you plug in zero, you just get, well, negative 21, right? But you get a seven times negative three or negative 21, right? And negative 21 is, well, negative, right? It's less than zero. Uh, oh, hang on. Yes. All right. All right. No, no. So this is, this is right. I realize I made a mistake here though. So negative, negative 21 is negative. So it's going to be negative everywhere between negative seven and three. But remember earlier I said that 11 is positive. So I don't know what I was thinking here. These should be positive signs. If 11 is positive, right, at negative eight and negative eight is right somewhere over here, then these should be positive signs. So yeah, I was, see, it's, it's easy to get confused here. Um, even I get confused. So yeah, these should be positive here. Um, but when x is zero, right, um, these are, uh, p of x will be negative, less than zero, right? Negative 21 is negative, less than zero. Okay, good. All right, phew. Um, all right, so, so that leaves this interval here. Something bigger than three, something bigger than three, maybe four. Right, so four is a good number to pick, something bigger than three. So just plug in four into, again, either version, this version. This version might be a little bit easier because we just get four plus seven is 11, and then four minus three is one. So again, we get positive 11. 11 is positive, and let me make sure I get the signs right this time. At x equals four, p will be positive. And of course, that's gonna be positive everywhere. X is bigger than four. So we get this, this chart here, and this, this, I'm gonna call this a sign chart. Now, I know the book does this a little bit differently, um, but personally, I, I find this just as easy um, to just plug in numbers and look at the sign chart. Once you get the sign chart, step five, of course, oops, step five here, way up here, hang on, step five, right? Well, we already did the marking. We did the, we marked the positives and the negatives on the number line here. 
Now we just write the solution using interval notation. Okay, so the solution to what? So let me go down here. This is step five. All right, so remember, we originally wanted to solve this inequality, p of x, is x squared plus 4x minus 21 is greater than or equal to 0. So now, what does greater than or equal to 0 mean? Greater than 0 means where it's positive. So where is it going to be positive here? Positive way over here, right? So when x is any number less than negative 7. Or we also have positive signs here. So x is going to be bigger than 3, right? And it just keeps going forever, right? Um, but nothing in between negative 7 and 3 because that's where it's, right, less than 0, not greater than or equal to 0. But what about where does it equal 0? It equals 0 right here at negative 7. So we have to include negative 7 as well. And we also have to include positive 3 because that, that's where it equals 0, right? So, so in fact, these intervals are going to be closed intervals now because we're going to be including the negative 7 and the positive 3. So now to write the final answer using interval notation, we're going from negative infinity to negative 7, right? And originally they were open intervals because we, we, we didn't know yet whether we included the negative 7 or not. But remember, negative 7, that's where it equals 0. And because of the, in, in, uh, the inequality sign is just not a strict inequality sign, it does include equal to 0. Remember, the original problem here had a greater than or equal to. That equal to indicates that we want to use a square bracket because we want to include the negative 7. Okay. Now, we're skipping over negative 7 to 3, so we're going to take the union with this interval from positive 3 to infinity. Again, we do want to include the positive 3 because of the equal sign. Okay? Okay, but notice the infinity and the negative infinity, those are not numbers. They never get equal signs regardless, right? So infinity is not a number. It's just, a, just an idea. Um, so this is the solution. This is the set of numbers, right? Um, that satisfy the original e equation. And the original equation was way up here. So let me copy that down again. This is the solution to the original inequality x times x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 21. Right. And so one way to check, although you know this is not the, maybe the best way to check, but one way to check is to pick a number that's on this solution set, right? And to plug it into this equation and see if it's true. Right. So for example, something bigger than 3. How about, well, we did 4 already. How about 5, right? So x equals 5 should be a solution. If we plug that in here, we get 5 times, oops, 5 plus 4. So that's 5 times 9, which is 45, right? 5 times 9 is 45. And 45, is that bigger than or equal to 21? Well, sure, 45 is way bigger than 21, so the answer is yes. So, so 5 is part of the solution. It's one of the numbers that's in the solution, right? But again, there's, there's an infinite number of numbers in the solution, right? We could have picked 6 or 28,000, right? Um, but there are some numbers that are not part of the solution. Those are the numbers between, right, negative 7 and 3, like 0, right? 0 would not be a solution here. Um, let's see what happens. If we plug in 0, we get 0 times 0 plus 4 which is 0 times 4, which is 0. And is 0 bigger than or equal to 21? Absolutely not, right? No, 0 is less than 21. So 0 is not part of the solution, OK? Right, so, so this, what I boxed here, is the solution using, and again, it's very important to write the answer in interval notation, because that's how we'll usually ask for the answer. Okay, so, so that takes care of our first example from section 3.6, right? This is solving a polynomial inequality.